George Comstock was really visionary in many ways. One of them was that in 1974, he embarked on setting up a specimen bank to give us clues about cancer and heart disease. A real world renowned expert in tuberculosis, George um, taught for 50 years or more at Hopkins. George was like a super mentor to me. He told me that in every one of his studies, he was the first research participant. So I have tried to be the first participant in all of our own pilot studies. He was always very aware that he had a responsibility to the people in the studies. And Joe is very similar. I think it's very fitting that Joe Korsh is the first person to have the professorship named for George. I study vascular disease in the body, and I mainly focus on kidney disease. And the kidney gets one-fifth of all the blood that the heart pumps out. And I was involved in developing the original definition of chronic kidney disease. But recently, we've worked on using the world's data to come up with a better definition, and the definition of progression of kidney disease. Progression meaning a change over time. This definition defines mild and moderate kidney disease. And then we decided to pursue a mathematical model that would figure out the lifetime risk of kidney disease. And the results are dramatic. Over 10% of US adults, over 20 million people in the US have some form of kidney disease. That means that general internists, it means that cardiologists have to care about kidney disease, and that people need to have an awareness of kidney disease that's similar to what they've had with hypertension and diabetes for decades. So the accuracy of the kidney disease diagnosis is very important for how we treat people with cardiovascular disease. Um, it helps me to understand which individuals are at risk for not tolerating some of the procedures I might want to provide. It also helps me better understand the kind of medications that are indicated to prevent complications among those patients as well. Also, quite importantly, the Comstock Professorship Income has helped me provide seed money for a number of other projects. So for example, a very big study on the vascular basis of cognitive decline. And now we are about five years in, and our initial results suggest that hypertension and diabetes in midlife, 20 years or more later, influences cognitive decline. So people think of Alzheimer's disease as a cause of dementia, and it is. But we think it's very important that there's a contribution from vascular disease. And really importantly, this may be a preventable form of dementia. Structure over the heart and the function um, looks uh, normal. For me, science gets done with numbers and aggregate numbers, and yet it connects to individuals. I came to Hopkins very young, right out of college, and I was meeting wonderful people who mentored me in becoming a scientist. And then in return, I found that I became a pretty good mentor. While it seems that much of this process is a bit of a pay it forward process, my mentees have learned from me, I've learned from Joe, he's learned from others, including George Comstock. Um, and, and those opportunities are really the best way to learn how to do the best research. Being named the George Comstock Professor was just a wonderful thing because I'm honored to be associated with his name. And scientifically, it actually creates a permanent endowment to really invest strategically and make the science we do the best it can be. Because George used to say, be afraid to die before you've won some victory for mankind, and he repeated it often to make sure we got it. <laughs>